and welcome back now today we're going to be talking a lot about uh, sensors again so we got a rain sensor here uh, with its um, module that comes with it we've got um, a 433 megahertz receiver over here uh, over on this side we've got three 433 megahertz transmitters that don't belong to that but nevertheless I'll find out something I found out something rather interesting and over on this side right over there this little thing here that's the real 433 megahertz transmitter that you can make that out quite well I think on there it says 433.92 so that's the exact frequency now they also do um, variants of this the 315 and I think the only difference is the number of turns on the copper wire they have on here but maybe I've got that wrong anyway that's what it's all about and before we can talk about any of this we need to talk about the project I've got in mind and it's become a slightly urgent project um, which you'll see why when I've readjusted the camera I've got my notepad uh, on the workbench here and I'm going to talk it through because things have changed quite dramatically since I first thought of it and what I'm actually going to do now which I suppose is um, the right way to do a project isn't it you think about it you sketch it out you think is this right is that right and then your ideas shift as you discover more things okay let's have a think about what this project is very simple but there are a number of elements to it that have made me have a bit of a rethink right um you'll have to excuse the uh, handle of my video camera sticking up here it's not often i have this sort of angle um right what's the uh, project then well obviously it's something to do with sensing rain because uh, i've got this rain sensor but uh, it's all down to my cat benny and here's benny with his little ears and whiskers now Benny's a rescue cat and he has a condition which means he's not really allowed out so he's a house cat unless he goes outside in his rather long pen right, half of which is protected from the elements and half can, is uh, open to the elements and sunshine more to point which he loves so Benny's out here quite happily and then suddenly apart from sunshine we also get would you believe in the uk a little bit of rain now benny's not an idiot he'll move himself from the uncovered part to the covered part and then probably sit by the door here he probably sits here wowing until we let him in the house here that's not the problem the problem is the stuff he has in this uncovered part is getting all wet he has a little basket here he has a little blanket inside there he has a couple of other little mats sitting around so he doesn't uh, get cold or damp or anything so as time has gone on we've had him a couple of years now and we've been caught out a couple of times what with the uk climate being the way it is so i thought right let's have a rain sensor out here enter rain sensor that's great so this can be mounted at 45 degrees on the roof uh, 45 degrees so that the rain um, drips down it and doesn't pool on the top because then it would never evaporate but at 45 degrees it'll make contact and somehow let us know and this little module that comes with it this one here has two outputs it has an analog output so 0 to 1023 standard analog output well i say that naught to five volts let's put it that way and a digital output that gets switched on at somewhere in that range by this pot here so you can adjust it to be switched on straight away or basically never at all okay that works all very well and as you might expect and this whole caboodle cost all of 245 which we can see on my browser window let me switch to that there it is so that's from ebay now this was a uk seller um, and I just happened to type in rain sensor and this came up and I thought you know what I can't wait six weeks or whatever it takes for stuff to come from China these days I just want to get this done and dusted because certainly in this year in the UK we've had more rain than ever before so let's get something in and finished nice and quick so this is from uh, buyer 50 atoms 
and it cost 245 and it was 75 pence economy postage whilst i was there and purely as an aside to this project it's got nothing to do with it i noticed he had this 0.36 inch led um, display four digits and i thought ah now that could be useful so i bought that as well that's for an entirely different project but it does look like this back to the workbench it looks like this here this is in fact is a clock module with the colon in between rather than the, the dots I might get one of those one with the dots actually because what I need it for I need dots rather than the colon not that it makes a huge amount of difference for what I want it but anyway that's that's an entirely different project and I've just happened to be there and uh, found that at the same time now the rain sensor that we uh, mentioned this one here I do have my doubts about its longevity whilst the board is sort of okay I mean it seems to be tinned circuit circuit board isn't it PCB board so that should be okay in the wet and it's double-sided and I'm guessing it's some sort of capacitive arrangement otherwise the value wouldn't go up in bits um, this connector um, isn't going to stand the test of time is it because if you any plug like this that exposed to free air damp free air is going to get corroded so anything that goes on here is going to have to be soldered on but for now that's fine um, now you can get proper rain sensors if interested for quite a bit more money so if we go back to the browse and have a look at an alternative rain sensor there's this one here now this one it, this picture makes it look absolutely ginormous doesn't it it's about the size of a, a 10p piece in the UK or a quarter in the United States um, there are some specs somewhere oh here we are specifications so the width is 30.48 which is just over the inch but it does say in the description that it's it's all made of this that and the other and is going to last for absolutely forever and a neon and I'm sure it would but I'm not going to spend eight euros 90 because that's what this says it's going to cost it's a little bit cut off let me expand that there we are our price 8.90 each i'm sorry i don't care how good it is not for 8.90 each i don't want it though so i'm going to make do with the cheapy version and just see how it goes this one here okay right back to the project so we've decided we're going to have a rain sensor here fine and that goes into a little mini module fine and that feeds out into what well i suppose you'd automatically assume that's going to be an arduino wouldn't you of some kind fine and inside the house um there's going to, have to be some kind of receiving of the data now i could run a cable relatively easily between this pen and the house there's already um, a mains cable there which funnily enough i did today but that's a different story or I can transmit the data. So if this was to go into a 433 megahertz transmitter, I could then transmit that data into the house by having its corresponding receiver here and take that value into another Arduino and then decide what to do with it. I mean, I could either have just a bleeper, so beep, 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 it's raining, or I could have that MP3 player it's in one of my earlier videos that describes how the Arduino can pick various tracks, which could be useful, because let's face it, this, uh, this module here, or the electronics bit of it, this one here, gives out this um, analog value, so 0 to 1023, depending on how wet it gets. I think zero must be like underwater, quite frankly. 1023 is totally dry. But it could be that if the analog a value was to be received here as well then the logic could be to do, to sound different mp3 tracks so you could have if it went down to say i don't know a thousand which might mean heavy fog i don't know i haven't tried it out properly yet uh, then you could have a an mp3 warning message coming out saying mild dampness detected just check it's not raining but if it went down to like 800 then you know damn well it's it's drizzling at the very least so you could have another message come out if it ever got down to 500 it's absolutely pouring down and have a, an absolute quick it's really raining heavily please get benny in and the stuff undercover 
great. Um, obviously, with that logic, you could have different beeps and loudnesses and all sorts of things. Fine. Now, that's all well and good. And I thought, well, hang on a minute. I haven't got power out here, not at the time of discussing this project. So how am I going to power it? So I thought, hmm, OK, well, a solar panel on the roof, along with this sensor, I could have a, a solar panel, probably about, what, twice the size of this, perhaps, would give me 5 volts at 250 milliamps, something like that. So you know, a 1 watt device. But I'm thinking, well, what happens if it starts getting all cloudy and dark? And just at the time you want it to work, there's no power coming out, not enough to drive an Arduino, which needs the full 5 volts, or at the very least 3.3 .3 if you're going to go down uh, the Due or Leonardo route or something like that. I thought it doesn't sound very, very reliable, does it? And I can imagine my wife's reaction if I'd built all this and then at the very time it's needed, it didn't work. So I thought, okay, well, there's various things we can do then to compensate for that. Let's, let's flip over a new page. So here we have our solar cell. And let's assume that this is giving out 5 volts or thereabouts, right? And we know that that's not going to be reliable enough to power our circuit. So this would actually feed into a LiPo charger, for example. That's fine. So the LiPo charger battery would be somewhere in here, something like that. Bit of a cockeyed drawing, but never mind. So this is the, the charger here. And then from that, you would always get out your 3.7 volts of your LiPo. So this is your LiPo, 3.7 volts, which has gone off screen. There we are. 3.7, though, isn't enough to charge or to um, actuate an Arduino. So then you want, you want a, a buck converter here. In fact, it's a buck boost to turn the 3.7 volts into 5 volts. And then, yes, then your Arduino is happy and contented. But already, can you can you see the complexity here? First of all, we need a LiPo. Fine, I've got one. I've got a spare one from the pack that I did the project on eons ago now. I only used three out of the four. So I've got a LiPo. A LiPo. I haven't got a solar panel, not big enough, that's going to charge this. I've got some little tiny ones just for testing. So I'd have to get one of those. and. They are not cheap. Do you know that? I thought these solar panels from China would be like a pound a pack now. No, 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 no. We're talking, for anything decent, so a 1 watt, 5 volt, you're talking about 5 pounds, or what's that in, in dollars? It's probably 750, something like that. Well, I don't think that's particularly cheap. It's, it's already, you know, pushing the cost of this up. The little charger unit, funnily enough, I have one of these. They're probably only about, I don't know, £1.50, something like that. So maybe $2. Um, then, of course, the LiPo itself, if I hadn't got one, they're not cheap either. But I've got one, so we, let's let's just call that quits. And, of course, the Buck Boost, I happen to have one of those. At least I think I've got um, a, a booster rather than a producer. Don't know. But that wouldn't cost a lot. That'd cost between one and two pounds from the Far East. Um, maybe what would that be then? One fifty to two seventy-five dollars, something like that. But all these components, look, you got one, two, three, four components just to make this Arduino happy. And I'm thinking, do you know what? I've always wanted to put power out into this cage anyway. So that's what I did this morning. I've got so many cables coming through my wall. I already had mains cable running down the wall for a flood lamp. So I just tapped into that with a nice little waterproof box um, and buried the cable in the ground and brought it up in here. So now there's 240 mains inside the cage. So it gets rid of all that complexity, which would have been a nice little project to do. And I might, might well still do it in the future just to prove it would have worked. But I just can't really take all these components on board just, for, just to supply the Arduino with its 5 volts. don't know, it just sounds, sounds like over-engineering, really. 
and, it, and of course the cost is fairly low apart from this um, solar cell which is well surprisingly expensive I don't know. We'll have a think about that. But at the moment, to supply the 9 volts to this, I've now got my 240 volts out there. So it's just a wall wart, which I have. In fact, I may very well use that one I fixed, which I showed in a previous video, where it had been damaged internally. So that will supply 9 volts into the Arduino. And the 5 volts out of the Arduino can then supply the 5 volts to the transmitter, which is this little thing here, if I decide to use it. Um, and of course on the inside it doesn't really matter about voltage because you, you can just plug it into the house mains but I still don't know what to do here and we're talking now about these transmitter receivers 433 megahertz let's have a little play with those because I discovered something quite interesting and there's there's a little question mark about these that's made me think really for this really let's let's have a look at the hardware and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, back on the workbench then. I've um, got the 433 MHz uh, receiver plugged in. Now, there's only four wires, plus, minus, and data. So it's uh, not exactly difficult, is it? Um, and I've got a sketch loaded up on here that's just going to show us what we're receiving. Now, it does use a special library, this one. So let me get the um, debug window up. We'll talk about the exact code when I come to do the project, but that wasn't the interesting part. So let me bring up the code window. Right, there's the debug window from the standard Arduino IDE. So this is listening now for a signal, and obviously you can't find one, but lo and behold, look, I've got one of these little gizmos here that comes from the Far East. It comes with a receiver as well, not, not this one. It comes with its own little uh, receiver. In fact, if you looked at the Child's Bedroom Project video, I use one of those um, four-channel transmitters, similar to this, doesn't look physically the same, but it's very similar. And it has a four-channel output without relays. And that uh, Child's Bedroom light, the red one, Works like a dream, still running now, and it's great. It really is. Anyway, got this, plugged it in. Whilst I was on the internet, it says, oh, have you seen this library, blah, blah, blah. Plugged it in. Look what happens now when I press one of these digits. I'm going to press the A. Look at that. It's actually receiving what's coming out of there. So I could effectively use this in a future project to control the Arduino. Just plug in one of these. Forget the actual real transmitter that comes with it, this one here, and some data. Just use this. I've got four channels, effectively, to do things with on my Arduino, to so make the Arduino do different things depending on what remote control I press. What you do with that information in your Arduino is entirely up to you, whether it's I don't know, the simplest things like turning lights on or I don't know, heating up your vat of beer or whatever it is you're doing in your home brewery or who knows the point is though that this the library that i'm using and this little receiver works very nicely with this thank you very much now i do have a, another one here uh, this is um, a four channel as well let me just bring this back to the workbench so this is a four channel now funnily enough i've already got one of these installed in my house and that's doing something entirely different but when i press this and you can see the little light come on so you know it's working. Nothing happens, look. Nothing in the debug window. It's not moving. Now I'm thinking... Now funny enough, I can hear some interference when that's playing. Uh, or when I press a button, I can hear a very faint buzz coming from something, probably my speakers. So we know it's transmitting, and I know this works anyway because I've tried it out with the receiver that came with it. But I'm thinking now that maybe this is a 315 megahertz. It doesn't actually say on it. Maybe if I took it apart, I'd better see. Now, 315 megahertz, I'm not sure that's legal in the UK. Although, frankly, I don't suppose they care if it's got a range of, you know, 100 meters or something. Because nobody's ever going to detect it apart from you. Um, but I've got this one here as well. Now, this is, this is I use 
on a daily basis. This actually controls my PC. So number one controls the PC on and off, or at least the monitors and this bench that I'm sitting at. It controls all the electronics on that. That's for the overhead lighting and that's for the extra video lighting. So this all works, but this also comes up on the debug window. So if I press number one, now I know it's on already, my PC, but you'll still see the signal up here. There we go, look. So that's number one, number two, and number three. Now if I turn off the video lighting, so it might get a little bit dark, but watch what happens on the debug window, because sometimes you get a little bit of a funny signal coming up. So there's the signal. Now did you see that very last, look at that last entry there. Let's go back to the code window again so you get a bit bigger. Now you can see here, the last entry is a 103. This was all off when I press the off button and it went a little bit dark. And then when I took my finger off the button, we got this one, 1398 103 come out. And I don't know why. It might be that the library that I'm using to interpret what's coming in here just can't quite get a handle on that. But on is fine. On nothing happens when I let go. Oh, tell a lie. Look at that. 103 comes up again. Not, there it does. Only occasionally. Or perhaps when it's short. Yeah, you see, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's have a little pulse. No, nope. ah, there it is. Now I've no idea what that means. It seems to indicate that this is sending out two different values, like I'm transmitting and now I've stopped transmitting, if that makes sense. But uh, this is um, bought from Maplin in the UK. It came as a sort of a four-way kit. Um, now Maplin in the UK is the equivalent of Radio Shack in the States. And I've no idea what else it's the equivalent of worldwide. But Radio Shack or Tandy, something like that. And it works very well under normal circumstances. So I don't know what that 103 is that comes out occasionally. Is it? It's only on that number three as well. No, it's not. It comes out in all of them if short little pulses occasionally. Hmm, interesting. So if I were to use this, for example, in conjunction with that receiver, my logic would have to be very careful to ignore these 103s that sort of seem to indicate end of transmission. Maybe that's exactly what they do, I don't know. I've, I've stopped transmitting, or this is the last thing I'm going to transmit. Don't get any such problem with this one though. As I say, this one doesn't work at all because it's probably on a different frequency. Right, now that was purely an aside while I was fiddling about with the 413 uh, receiver thinking, am I really going to use this just to transmit um, it's raining or it's not raining? So I think the, the decision is sort of coming into my mind now that, um, let me just take that one off. Right, if I am going to transmit these values um, into my house, I don't want to transmit just on or off, which is what this module, remember, gives us as an alternative controlled by this pot. Because I can do that in logic, in business logic, in the Arduino anyway. So I don't need that. What I want is the analog output from here. And then I can decide what to do with that raw data, as it were, back inside the house. So it's a little bit, little bit wet, like dense fog or spitting, or no, it's actually showering now. Oh my God, Benny's underwater, that sort of thing. And I can decide then whether to play an MP3 file with some kind of warning on it or just a bleeper. Now I'm thinking here in real terms, I'm not gonna be here most of the time. I'm at work during the day. So it's my wife who's gonna hear this and I don't want to annoy her because she gets enough bleeps and blurps and all sorts of things from all the other stuff I've built around the house. So maybe I'm thinking an MP3 player with some tracks on there could be a, a nice alternative. Altern alternative for that though, I could actually have some music like It's Raining Men by the Weather Girls or what else can we have about the weather? Um, there's a track by, who is it? It's called Weather. Uh, can't remember who it's now by. 19, late 1970s there was a track, can't remember it. I'm sure there are lots of tracks though that are weather based that I could play, along with a warning perhaps, just for a bit of fun. Um, oh yes, now the other thing of course, if Benny isn't out there, we don't want any of this going on. Well, that's not true. 
if Benny's not out there but we've left his baskets in there ready for him to go out again and then it starts raining we still need this warning so what I'm gonna to have to have inside or outside the house is some mechanism for turning all this off well the transmission um, or possibly the reception whichever way around it is probably that and it may be ironically that I end up using something like this to turn off the socket up here so that this never turns on from inside the house because somewhere there's got to be something that turns this on and off now we could in introduce a switch here a nice big punch switch you know like you get on um, machines emergency stop type switches you just you just whack it nice and hard to say off or have a nice switch that says Benny is in or Benny is out I don't know all these questions have to be thought about because it's no good building all this and then having complaints from the primary user yes you know what I mean if it doesn't go down well with her then I'm lost so it's got to be well thought of including all this mp3 and bleeping and all the rest of it so that's my thoughts interesting about the um, 433 transmitter uh, receiver rather isn't it and I'm still thinking long and hard about whether I really am going to have two Arduinos one here and one here it's not the cost my Arduinos are relatively cheap cheaper than the cup of coffee I had today in uh, a large department store which cost me something like it was 450 for two I think I think it was that anyway well I can get two Arduinos nanos for less than that in fact where was the last place I got them from let me just bring that up on screen for you let's go to the browser right that's that now my purchase history says oh here we are this is where I bought them for look now this is um, scooter boy 101 he's a UK seller and I bought 10 of these for 19.99 um, which I thought was pretty good that was two pound a piece wasn't it and in fact yes that was actually discounted look because it should be 21.99 but when you bought them um, look save two pound for every 15 pound you spent so I thought well hang on this is more than 15 pound do I get a discount yes you do so 19.99 20 quid which I would say is $30 but it's not since we uh, voted to leave the EU the pound's gone into free fall hasn't it so it's uh, about 130 to the pound now anyway whatever that is in dollars um, two pounds though a piece so it's not the cost that would stop me using a nano because that is pretty cheap isn't it when you think about it so I don't know we're just gonna have to think and I think it's probably worth thinking about it at this stage the drawing design stage then doing something and then thinking oh I should have changed that oh if only I thought about that a bit harder so I'm thinking about it long and hard now in fact I'm even involving you in that discussion so that when we finally come to look at this project in its finality you'll understand my thought processes okay so if you've got a, one of these 433 megahertz receivers and one of these cheapy things from the far east or whatever you can have a play about as well I think the next thing for me to do is to wire up one of these the actual transmitter and get that analog value transmitted across which I think is going to be pretty easy oh and finally there's um, a range issue on this well not an issue you see where it says antenna if you don't solder in a piece of wire there of the right length the range is about two inches but if you solder in the right piece of wire and it says it on the website I'll, I'll show you all this in the actual project video um, you get something like 200 meters or something ridiculous it really is quite good and it's all legal 433 megahertz legal in the UK oh saved by the bell right just before you go I've managed to uh, connect up the transmitter that's the one on the back here so that's this little thing on the front that looks like one of these okay it's very simple three wires plus minus and the data and the receiver here which um, you saw in the other part of the video that looks like this okay not much to it once again you've got plus minus and data the two data pins are in fact connected together the two in the middle so it's not really a four wire it's a three wire okay so I've connected these together so this is transmitting some data random data from one of the um, analog ports here and this is receiving it so if we go over to our browser window uh, code window sorry right now here you can see let me just clear this and you'll probably be able to see it better Right, I've got two COM ports here. So I've got COM4, which is the transmitter running. That's the one in black. And the one in red is COM5, uh, COM5 being the receiver. 
Okay, so you can see what I'm transmitting and what I'm receiving. Now, funnily enough, there's a little gap there, a little gap again. I think the um, if we look at the gap between here, I think it's a little bit too much for it, even that little tiny thing. So let's move it to the side. Is that going to make it more? Right, they're virtually on top of each other now. Even then it's not 100%, is it? Having been 100% in the course of the past hour, it now decides to play up. Isn't that always the way? So the black is what's being transmitted. Well, it thinks it's being transmitted anyway. And the red is what's being received. So as you can see, the reception isn't that great here. And I don't know if it's the orientation or what, to be quite honest. That way. Mm. Well, anyway, what you can see here, then I'm transmitting a random value from the analog port. So if I touch these analog ports, it should go. There we are. Goes down and up and all over the place as I touch. And um, the receive value is there. Now I'm transmitting at a very low um, bit rate, something like 2,000 bits per second. So to make it more reliable, although <laughs> I don't think this is exactly reliable at the moment, is it? Um, it was actually working really well not so long ago. Well, at least it gives you an idea of um, how it can be used. Okay, so all this will be described in the main project when I finally finish it. And I must say the um, virtual wire library I'm using for this wasn't the easiest to use, especially not concatenating all the data and stuff. But we'll go through all that near the time. Okay, back to the main video. I better go and answer that. Right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.